Hey guys, I'm Joel, and I'm an ecologist at the Biodiversity Conservation Trust. Part of my role is to help you, our landholders, better protect biodiversity on your properties. Today, I'll be going over some important things to consider when choosing appropriate fencing for your conservation area. The BCT has developed guidelines to assist landholders in making decisions when it comes to fencing, and we encourage you to refer to these guidelines in addition to watching this video. Conservation fencing can be an effective tool to manage biodiversity on your property, but there are some risks to consider. Most fencing provides little benefit to native fauna populations, and hostile fencing, such as barbed wire, can be a barrier between otherwise accessible areas of habitat. Hostile fencing can have both direct and indirect impacts on native wildlife. Direct entanglement is a major issue and is known to injure or kill thousands of native animals every year. Animals such as bats and gliders are well documented victims and there are over 70 different native fauna species known to be affected. This type of fencing can also cause indirect impacts. It may limit the ability of native fauna to access water sources or feed locations and can separate individuals within a population that leads to population isolation and reductions in genetic diversity. So firstly, we should ask ourselves whether fencing is necessary at all. Conservation fencing should only be used to protect native species and communities within the conservation area. So when exploring options for fence placement, it's important to identify areas where fencing might pose a risk to native wildlife. Examples include within and between habitat patches, across wildlife trails, or between trees that are frequented by animals such as squirrel gliders or koalas. Wherever possible, these areas should not be separated by fencing and ideally any existing fencing in these areas should be removed or modified. You should seek sites elsewhere for your fencing and make sure you maintain habitat connectivity both within and outside of your conservation area. The BCT supports wildlife friendly fencing. That's fencing that aims to minimise wildlife injury or death through alternative designs. This might be something as simple as using plain wire instead of barbed wire, particularly for top and bottom strands. It could also include providing adequate spacing underneath and between fence strands, increasing visibility by attaching reflective materials such as metal tags to fencing, and placing poles either side to assist traversal by arboreal mammals. You might even find your own innovative ways to implement a wildlife friendly approach to fence design. We encourage you to explore fencing that will help native fauna travel on your property while also protecting sensitive biodiversity values. The BCT can provide you with financial support for fencing construction when there is an identified need and a wildlife friendly approach is a key part of any application. Minimum standards for fencing are provided in our guidelines. If you'd like to discuss your fencing options and the support we may be able to provide, please contact us at the BCT. We'll help you develop a plan that ensures the best possible outcome for you and the native wildlife that calls your property home. Thanks for watching.